All right, in this walkthrough, I'm going to show you how I captured and cracked a WPA2 handshake using Kali Linux running inside VirtualBox. Okay, so first thing you want to do is plug in your USB Wi-Fi adapter before starting up your Kali VM. Then go into VirtualBox settings under USB and make sure the adapter is attached to the Kali machine. Next, you want to disable the adapter on your host machine so Kali has full control over it. After that, boot up Kali, open a terminal, and run lsusb to confirm Kali detects the adapter. Then run iwconfig to check the interface name. For me, it showed up as WLAN0. Before putting the adapter into monitor mode, you want to kill any conflicting processes that might mess up with the capture packet. I did that by running sudo airmon ng check kill. Once I was clear, I put the adapter into monitor mode by running sudo airmon ng start WLAN0. After that, I checked again with the IW config, and now it showed up as WLAN0 mon, which means it's ready to capture traffic. Then I started scanning for nearby Wi-Fi networks by running aerodump ng WLAN0 mon. I let it run for a few seconds, found my target network, and made note of the BSS ID and the channel it was on. After that, I locked onto just that target network using aerodump ng the BSS ID, specifying the channel, and specifying it to write to a hack1 file on the WLAN0 mon interface. This filtered out everything else and saved the capture into a file called hack1.cat. To speed it up getting a handshake, I launched a deauthentication attack by running airplay ng. Uh, what this does is forces a device to disconnect and reconnect, which triggers the handshake, which is what we need at this point. Once I captured it, I opened the capture file in Wireshark filtered for EO pull and looked for messages two of four from the handshake. That's how you can tell it's a good crackable handshake. Next, I stopped the monitor mode with sudo airmon ng stop wlan0 mon and started cracking the password using aircrack ng. Aircrack ng hack 1-ocap 01cat.cap cat write to a write file using the word list rocky.txt that comes with Kali. Aircrack tried every password from the word list until it found the correct one. And after getting the correct password, I opened the .cap file in Wireshark to take a look at the captured packets. At this point, everything's still encrypted. You'll notice that most of the data frames just show as 802.11 traffic with no readable content. So before we can actually see any of the real network activity, we need to enable decryption. I went to edit, then down to preferences, and from there I scrolled down to IEE 802.11 protocol settings. I checked the box that says enable decryption. Under decryption key, I added the Wi-Fi password using the WPA-PWD format. That's just how Wireshark expects the key to be entered so it can decrypt WPA2 traffic properly. Once I was done, you can immediately see the difference. Wireshark starts revealing actual readable packets that are highlighted. You'll notice things like TCP and other protocols now showing up with clear details instead of just raw frame data. But even with P WPA2 decryption working, some of the application layer traffic is still protected. For example, anything using HTTPS still appears encrypted because it's using TLS on top of Wi-Fi encryption. To get around that, I went on the target device and manually exploited the TLS session keys from the browser. In this case, it was my Firefox on my Dell. All right, so now I'm on my Dell, which is the target device I was capturing traffic from earlier. To decrypt TLS traffic in Wireshark, especially HTTPS, I need to log the session keys from the browser. I did that by creating a new environment variable in Windows. I opened System Properties, went ahead to the Advanced tab, and clicked Environment Variables. Under my user variable, I clicked New and set the variable name to SSL key log file. For the value, I gave it a path like C, users, your name, document, slash, SSL keys dot TXT, which tells the system where to save the session keys. Once that was set, I opened Firefox, and from that point on, I started automatically logging the TLS session keys to that file in that background. Then I used a USB storage device to transfer the key log file over to my Kali machine so I could use it for decryption inside Wireshark. So I'll go back to the capture in Kali and open it in Wireshark. I'll head over to the TLS protocol settings. That's under Edit, Preferences, Protocols, TLS. From there, I'll point Wireshark to the session key log file, the one we pulled from the Dell device. This tells Wireshark how to decrypt all the HTTPS traffic that was captured earlier. So if I go to DNS, uh, 
Pulse expand it. And you can actually see here the names of the websites visited on the Dell machine during the capture. 